Hi, welcome. My name is Frida Weisel, and today I am going to show you the Hasidic Yiddish newspaper. I'm going to unpack with you what's in it, what makes it unique, and all the different stories we can share about it today. So before I do, uh, I'm going to be sharing my slideshow. Please subscribe to my channel. I need you to subscribe in order for me to be able to do more videos. Uh, okay, so there are three main weekly Hasidic Yiddish newspapers, and they've been in print for many, many years, and they are very popular. And every Thursday I see at the grocery stores arriving giant, huge packs of freshly printed newspapers. And um, the newspapers remain a very important and integral part of Hasidic life, unlike in the rest of the world where we're largely seeing the demise of the newspaper. And there are three main reasons why the Hasidic community's newspapers are not going anywhere near out of print. And here, here's really roughly why. First of all, because secular newspapers are not kosher. So the competition from the uh, main newspapers, which largely in the world, in the Western English print media, for instance, have been concentrating under a select few media companies that own the newspapers. Those competitions can compete for this newspaper market because they aren't providing the kosher, censored version of the newspaper that this community needs. So um, the New York Times the Daily News, the Wall Street Journal, all of these have no foothold, are not seen sold in any of the newsstands, are not available for purchase in this community because they are inappropriate. We'll talk more about censorship in a little bit. The other reason is the internet is not allowed in the home and in the office, which is usually where the men work. It has to be censored. Uh, most people before marriage don't have smartphones, so they don't have any access to the internet and even after marriage, especially women, uh, the, they might have kosher phones, filtered phones. So certainly the internet access is nothing like how we have it. And um, this means people are interested in getting the news outside of the internet. One of the industries that caters to that are hotlines, which you call a phone number and you hear pre-recorded messages of the news. And of course, the newspaper. And this is the third reason which the pre-recorded hotline can be competing with either that pre-recorded hotline has the advantage of being instantaneous. The moment there's an accident, the moment there's some major breaking news, people can get the news on the pre-recorded hotline. The print media is only published once a week or daily, but on Shabbos, you're not allowed to make phone calls. On Passover, on Sukkot, longer holidays, sometimes there are three days stretches where you're not allowed to call, you're not allowed to browse your phone, you're not allowed to um, drive anywhere. So you're, you're really limited in terms of information and you really want to have print information in advance so you can read. So these three really make the newspaper still a very, very big part of the print culture in this community. So um, here is uh, Der Yeats publication before Passover, where they uh, reveal their upcoming giant Passover number. Passover is some, let's say, eight days where uh, largely the media companies aren't putting out new newspapers and people want to stock up the paper you buy before Passover can be this thick. And they and it has many, many portions in it about rabbis for the family, recipes for the children, and so on. And, and here's this little, their little advertisement this year, 2021, where they advertise their mega Passover number. Should we watch it again? I like it. Um, this shows, first of all, huge printing. I don't know. Is this how they print it? 
I would love to go for a tour in the printing houses. So this is this is an invitation out there to Der Yid and Der Blatt and Der Zeitung to um, invite me to their printing um, areas so I can film it um, or just look and report back. But also you see all of the additions they're, they're advertising and see how fancy the ad is. And, and I'm sure this Fried & Co is the company that made this little video clip. So first of all, it's a, this is digital. This shows how much they are desperate to burst out of the medium that they're limited into. And they're trying to do all the visuals that the New York Times does. They're just simply limited because of the censorship, because of the religious needs. And they do whatever they can within the, that religious, uh, those religious boundaries. So, um, so here we see this gentleman right before Shabbos. And we know it's Friday because it's watermelon, it's summer, sun, uh, summer Shabbos. You must buy watermelon. This is my memory, you sit in the porch and you read the newspaper and you read it for the umpteenth time and there's absolutely nothing to read in there anymore. Um, but you eat watermelon and popcorn, watermelon and popcorn and the newspapers are things that roll out in the neighborhood on Thursdays and um, it's the must have. So um, as well as the, of course you can buy uh, different magazines for uh, Shabbos as well. So the three main newspapers, what differentiates them really are they are rivaling political affiliations. Der Yid is the main newspaper for the Zalman faction of the Satmar sect. Der Blatt, when there was the major rift in the aughts, uh, I guess it was the 2000s, um, between these two brothers of the Satmar sect um, who wanted to, to both... Um, they both wanted to, to ascend to the throne of the of the dynasty. They the newspaper broke, as well as many parts of the Satmar institution broke in two. So the, the Der Yid had previously been the newspaper we had in our home, and then it became Der Blatt for us because we chose to affiliate ourselves with Aaron, which is the older brother, and he his his faction made the Der Blatt newspaper. And then the third, so we have Der Yid, Der Blatt, and the third one is Die Zeitung, which is sort of unaffiliated. I would say it's not necessarily the Satmar sect. It's larger Hasidic, and um, they, they, they reflect outside of either of these factions. But the newspapers will often tell the stories. The main distinction between them will be that they will tell the stories of their rivaling sect, uh, pumping up the, the sex numbers and it, the success of the sex events. So for instance, this is Der Yid uh, revealing that um, 100,000 uh, people have gathered in, in Israel at an event, and this is the Der Zeitung. So it's, it's an event for, for the Satmar's Zalman faction. So they put 100,000. Meanwhile, Der Zeitung tells a story of only close to 20,000. So someone put this up and said, there's a problem where have 80,000 people disappeared. There's a major um, search underway for 80,000 people in Jerusalem. Um, they're really being looked for. It's it's obviously everyone is is cranking up their numbers. It's a little like partisanship, like the Democrats and Republican, but it is perhaps not ideologically uh, very different. It is more about sort of sort of affiliations, loyalties to which side and my side had more people show up at the event. And the newspapers are, are really the front for, for creating the propaganda for these different rivaling factions. This is Der Blatt telling a story about how busy, how many people there were in the event that they hosted for Kafal of Kislev. Okay, now as let's talk about the news, how it's told in this community. And in order to talk about the news, uh, I want to talk about the medium is the message, which is the very well-known phrase of the Canadian media theorist, Marshall McLuhan. And he essentially brought into popular uh, conversation the, the awareness that how you receive information completely changes the information itself. If I tell you about the Hasidic newspaper by being in Williamsburg and, and looking at the newspaper with you, it is gonna be different than if I show it to you in a curated slide presentation. The message itself 
becomes different um, just because the medium is different. And um, the medium difference uh, in the Hasidic community is something that I think is important to notice in when it comes to the news itself. The medium of the news in the secular world in the larger world is largely gone to the vis to the visual um neil postman who was at nyu also a media theorist um very well known for the book amusing ourselves to death where he was highly critical of television talked about uh the medium is the message and he took it one step further by saying the metaphor is the, is the message the way in which you convey the information is um the message itself. And he said, each technology has an agenda of its own. It is, as I have suggested, a metaphor waiting to unfold. So if you watch TV, the agenda of the TV is what you receive. If you read your news in text, that is going to make a very big difference. Um, and, and Postman said, television is our culture's principal mode of knowing ourselves. It is the nature of the medium that it must suppress the content of ideas in order to accommodate the requirements of visual interests. And this is what I want to tell you about visual interests versus, tech, versus text interests are very important distinctions. Learning about your news by seeing it in um, a smiling a set of co-hosts that have been beautifully uh, made up for the camera so that they can be eye candy with very fast visuals and exciting music is a very different news story than reading long text without any images. You're getting different news. Even if you're both reading about the coronavirus pandemic, you're really getting a different message. And um, in our newspaper culture, of course, we don't, modern newspaper culture doesn't tell stories like CNN, it's still text-based, but of course it's largely gone online with a lot of visuals. It's come a long way from this 1920s uh, newspaper, New York Times paper, where it's pure text, tiny text, which I'm sure people could read with far, far um, more advanced attention spans. So this is where the city community's news is interesting because they are always interested in um, they are always interested in showing pictures. They are always interested in. Um, they are always interested in, in in making it more colorful. But they are extremely limited because of the censorship needs. Therefore, the newspapers will largely look like this. This is the story of House Leader Pelosi is worried that Trump uh, won't step down um, if he has a, a narrow. Uh, loss in the elections. So as you can see, this is pure unadulterated text with no images because they don't want to show Pelosi. They don't want to show Trump. Largely, the newspaper refrains from showing pictures of secular people. So this is a story about China is, again, worried about Wall Street. And here we have the Dow Jones, the S&P, uh, the Nasdaq charts. Um, but that's it. Again, there's no pictures. And this is when I browse through it, the areas that are about the rabbis are very picture dense. Stories of the boys' schools are picture dense. Advertisements are picture dense. So again, not to conf not to say that this community is that the, the newspaper here is refraining from the image culture. It's only very constrained. And therefore, the news segments themselves, the world news segments, are, are largely no pictures. And then there is a, an insert in the middle, usually. This is from Der Blatt, where there is pictures where, again, you'll see they're trying very hard to do as little as possible of people in the pictures. Um, they're trying not to show outsiders, Westerners. So it's going to be interesting pictures. Calamities are often pictured. Disast world disasters, natural disasters, accidents are pictured, and they're always trying to not show people. The effect of that is, of course, enormous. Instead of hearing about a hurricane by, by seeing a recording of a woman who had just escaped or hearing about um, a child kidnapping by, by seeing the, the testimony of the distraught parents, you're just seeing a car. <laughs> you're just seeing the getaway vehicle. You're seeing a much more dehumanized, much less sensationalist, much more um, text-based version of the news. It's all 
almost as if there is a remove and it's more like here are the curiosities of what's going on around the world uh, instead of this kind of emotionally intense, this thing happened that you should be so invested in. So pictures of women. Now, sometimes the newspapers will show pictures of men they used to. I think largely they try to, they've tried to stop showing pictures altogether, especially the weekly newspaper. But the pictures of women are especially not allowed. And um, this has got the Hasidic newspapers into hot water. Famously, Die Zeitung was all over the news when the famous picture of Hillary Clinton in the Situation Room in 2011 was included in the newspaper and she is missing. She was removed. They just photoshopped her out. And this is Biden and this is Obama. Here's the original picture. Here is Clinton. And um, oh, here's another woman. She also disappeared. <laughs> uh, poof. And this controversy um, was so big that the newspaper had to apologize. The Die Zeitung, and they said that it is a long-standing editorial policy. They had had a long-standing editorial policy of not publishing women's images, and they explained that its readers believe that women should be appreciated for who they are and what they do, not for what they look like. And the Jewish law of modesty are an expression of respect for women, not the opposite. This is such incredible. Um, I hate this kind of neo-feminist bullshit. This, oh, no, no, we, we don't show women because it is, we women are even better. Um, it is how we respect women by, by wiping them off the map, essentially. Um, I don't buy it. They don't show women because um, they see women as temptresses that need to be, um, and, and, it's it's a much more complicated than just that, but but there is there is without a doubt a hierarchy in which men are seen as um, visible and uh, present, and women need to be quietly behind the scene if you like it or not. Um, this is one of the WikiLeaks of Hillary Clinton. One of the things when her her emails were leaked was that she actually. I think this is from her, an email um, with a subject unbelievable, and she's sending it to a number of people with the story of her censorship out of the Zeitung. So the Zeitung has really reached some very important echelons in American politics. This is a whole Happy Mother's Day uh, complaint about feminism, which is about how the, I'm so glad to be a woman and be visible. And I think that in itself is a very problematic stance select few women that are visible in secular culture, but that's a tangent I won't go into. There's a second Hasidic publication that edited out Hillary Clinton. And I think after some number of stories like this, maybe this is why part of why they stopped showing pictures of people altogether or, or part, part of why it's certainly not the whole story, but definitely the, the arrival of the internet has made their media much more susceptible to public uh, backlash, outrage, exposure. So. Censorship by omission. This is a very big part of how the newspaper and the news is curated. You must largely, largely censor the news. A lot of what's in the secular news can show up. And you, I'm going to show you in a little bit um, how many parts of the secular news are not shown at all. But then there are sometimes stories like big political stories that involve scandal. I remember when I was a kid, the Bill Clinton impeachment, that is a scandal, a political story that cannot be censored. It cannot be completely omitted. And the same situation we have with the um, Brett Kavanaugh confirmation, which was a story of a confirmation of a candidate to the Supreme Court of the United States. It's not something you can censor out that... Um, was involving sex scandal stories that uh, was not appropriate for the Yiddish newspaper. So at the time, I was very curious to see how the newspaper would handle it. So I bought Der Yid, and this is their story of Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court is in danger after new accusations against him. And the 
subtitle is Trump is willing to accept small delay in the Senate confirmation. Trump's spokesperson, the president, is not yet looking at any new names to replace Kavanaugh for nomination to the Supreme Court. Now, this is the, I, for a blog post, I translated the entire thing. I'm just going to read here where it says, um, uh, this comes after new information came to light. This, this, is, this is the gist of what they're saying, why the nomination is being held up. This comes after new information came to light and new ethical accusations against the person whom President Trump nominated to the highest court. New Information came to light. What new information came to light? What new ethical accusations? Let's read. The Democrats immediately called to halt the Kavanaugh vote. But then several Republican senators also added to their call that the Senate shouldn't rush for the vote for Kavanaugh's confirmation to Supreme Court. Most important, wait, what are the ethical accusations against the person whom President Trump nominated? Flake said that the news that he needs to hear more about the most recent allegations against Kavanaugh and a few other Republicans, wait, what accusations? As usual, Mark Calker of Tennessee also said they agree. Flake is one of the 11 Republican participants on the narrowly divided committee. Flake said Sunday the committee should try to send Kavanaugh's name without an attempt to hear. Dan Calker said yes. Grassley reprimanded the Democrats. If it was true what, it, what is said against Kavanaugh, that it could have been brought up a lot earlier. So Grassley argues that the minority set, side withheld the anonymous claim the entire six weeks. There is nothing telling you what these ethical accusations are and absolutely no mention of the woman who is making the accusation. She does not exist whatsoever. There is a complete censorship by omission in the way this story is told. And naturally, it leaves the reader without enough information to even ask questions. I think the average reader reads this and is so confused, is so unmoored that they think, well, man, I guess I something is going on there. I, I don't fully get it. You're kind of surrendering of your ability to analyze the situation because you're given so much vague information, so much extraneous information without the meat of it being there. And, and I think this censorship by omission is a very effective way that the community newspapers deal with telling the story, which is to confuse, so confusion to give um, information without the important picture in itself. Oh, this is me in the news. <laughs> I was in the Der Zeitung newspaper. Someone wrote in um, a letter to the editor. So I'm a very minor um, moment of fame that I had. Uh, that someone in the community was nice enough to send me the screenshot. But here's what the, paper, the letter to the editor said. There's a tour in Williamsburg that is led by a woman who has rotten, was rotten. She still remembers the Jewish way of life, but as she is someone who gave up the Hasidic lifestyle of her family, it is obvious that she will, of course, say bad things, twist everything in order to justify her rotten way of life. I like, see, this is, this is something that I see a lot, and I, in this community, I blame it. I think it's an outcome of not having enough information, not knowing how to get enough information, of being confused, is people retreat into making assumptions in their own head. Well, instead of learning, well, let me go and see what she's actually saying. Let me get the details. And then based on having gathered as much information as possible, I will know what I think about her. You have not been trained that you are have the capacity to collect information on your own. You must surrender knowing because only those that which has been bring, brought to you, the information which has been catered to you, brought to your door, is what you're allowed to have. Otherwise, you can't have the, you, you, you're not allowed to look at it. The, the information isn't there. Um, and when you are left without enough information and without knowing how to get enough information, what happens is actually that you retreat into your own mind and use the limited information you have to theorize and draw conclusions. So you say, well, I have the information that people who leave hate us or, or at least um, are 
are disappointed or, or have negative things to say about us. I have the information that this woman left. I have the information that this woman talks about us. And I put all of that together with a conclusion that she's saying she twists everything, says bad things in order to justify her way of life. Um, so, so, and, and, and this is not specific to me. I see this a lot in the way people in this community think and, and reason, which, which reflects an, a lack of, of training and access to checking your theories against reality and instead creating these hypotheses in a vacuum and then having all of these extremely, um, you know, like cooked up in your own head um, theories about things. Okay, now this I told you I was gonna show you what's covered versus in the Hasidic paper versus what's covered in the MS, MSM. Um, and in order to show you this, I went to the deli in my area of Brooklyn and I couldn't find the newspaper. So I said, do you have the newspaper? He said, yeah, did. It's over there. It took, took me a little to look and be like, this is the, it's like three papers that were there. So there was only a daily news and I bought that. Um, and um, I, I just wanted to show you the difference in, in the newspaper presence. But in order to compare as best as possible apples to apples, I got um, the daily news and I downloaded the free daily from the Dare Yid. Dare Yid has um, on Telegram, I get this, and I think you can get it on WhatsApp and email. They send you a daily um, newspaper every day with the stories. So I looked at that and then I compared it to the daily news to see how um, the coverage is different. So this is the Dare Yid. Um, whoever is putting together Dare Yid daily sees his daily on it. I think it's a very square person. <laughs> um, and they really go by the sort of don't want to say anything controversial. This is the Friday edition has the front page, a library of links to little kuntuses, uh, little uh, pamphlets that you can print out for Shabbos reading. And they're mostly the religious part. If I was more interested in theology, in religious um, spirituality, which I'm not, I would be reading these. I opened some of them. They're in Hebrew, mostly for men, maybe in some in Yiddish, but they're they're mostly just little biblical things, um, religious ponderings. Uh, so so there there are all sorts of diff different publications for for the religious aspect of things. For some reason, my apologies. My PDF version. I checked it on my iPad as well. For these um, newspapers, don't. Uh, come out properly. So this is the main story, Hope Nias. Adapisha, European countries are taking steps um, against the, the new COVID wave. Um, and, and there are ads here, and then there are different stories. This is about a fatal mine incident, uh, mass immigrants that were drowned. This is a story about the German party's pro-Jew declaration. Um, and this is this is a story. New um, Trump 2024 speculations again. They try not to show pictures this because it's like the people who get it on email and get it on on WhatsApp are already a little more open minded. They are at liberty to show pictures of people. So they are, for instance, showing here the the mayor elect for New York City, Eric Adams. But here, when they talk about Biden's um, cancerous growth, they're just showing the White House. So. Uh, there is more imagery of people than you'll find in the newspaper, but still a limited and and only men, only men. I have not seen, I looked, I remember seeing women in the daily, but I looked back at quite a few and I couldn't find it. Maybe, maybe they stopped, I'm not sure. So here's a, an overview of what was covered in the Dare Yid daily for November 26, 2021. European countries take steps against the new COVID wave. They have a survey if the ruling in the Rittenhouse trial will bring justice or chaos. They have the story of the fatal mine incident in Russia, masses of immigrants drown in the sea, German party's pro-Jew declaration, Florida Jewish EMS is expanding, 
the Trump 2024 speculations, North Carolina voting laws in court, the Biden cancerous growth, federal investigation into wild passengers on airplanes who are misbehaving and the fines, confirmation of a big new wind farm, Eric Adams, uh, mayor-elect, masses, and this is supposed to be like a bit of positive news, they say, that the masses contribute financially to a man who's recently been freed. That was a picture of the black man we saw. Um, so that's like an uplifting news story. And then the notes, um, they have three small notes. That the EU confirmed fi Pfizer for ages 5 to 11. The um, Jewel will have to pay uh, $14.5 million. And Rodney Harrison, a New York City police officer, uh, poli serviceman, um, is retiring. So those were the stories here. And you'll see they cover things like COVID completely uh, in line with the mainstream. They just simply repeat whatever is in the mainstream without taking a stance. And they definitely don't take up anti-vaccine stance. Um, here's the daily news. The cover of the story is a, a cop that was um, shot and the story is about a hero, personality worship. The, the taking an individual, making them the center of a story is the crux of what's different in Hasidic newspapers versus secular media. In the secular media, the news story will, will center around the personality and their drama. And that, of course, makes it a lot more sensationalist. In the Hasidic com community, they will take out the entire story of the individual, make it a larger um, who, who was shot, what kind of gun, what mystery, etc. This is a story about the Thanksgiving parade, which was not in the Hasidic paper. See, I did a little X. I was waiting for my order uh, at the at a restaurant, and I sat down and I looked at what was covered, and I made X's. Um, Thanksgivings things are not covered. Uh, the hit and run story wasn't covered, although I would guess it will be. Uh, the Arbery mom in the trial wasn't covered. Might be. The GoFundMe for the person at the parade might also be, it wasn't in it. Um, this was covered. It was about the top cop, 30 year career. Um, the crooks attack the guard at uh, Nordstrom wasn't covered. Nothing about Black Friday, Thanksgiving, that whole thing, absolutely not covered. Um, BB gun story, not covered. This is See, look at how differently they cover the Joe Biden story. There was a picture of the White House, and it's about the doctor, sadly, uh, like, Louis Liney uh, saw a growth, and here it's like a picture of Joe, first name basis, showing him very, very, and the medium is message, I think, is very important. There are very, very important implications to getting your news this way versus um, in, in the Hasidic version um, and I'm not saying any of it is is necessarily good or bad. I mean, I think all 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 extraneous news. My personal belief uh, is that we're getting news that is not relevant, and all of that is um, they're they're just entertainment. They're not news. They're purely entertainment in both aspects, and we we should treat it as entertainment. Uh, trench war, Mexican trench war, wasn't covered either. Get Back series dispels and confirms some Beatles myth is, of course, not covered. Secular music, the entire entertainment section is not covered. So the rom-com Redux, I think you say Redux, isn't covered. Um, I can't read this. Uh, Leeds Holiday Box Office uh, is, of course, not covered. Eleven Die, Dozens Trapped in Russian Coal Mine was covered. Green Eyed Girl cover, not going to be covered because the entire story of this famous picture of the girl on the National Geographic cover and the woman on the cover is not happening. So of course, it's not covered. Um, New Yorkers Get Up That wasn't covered. The entire editorial section, Black Friday, nope. Um, let Public Art Bloom, no way. That's not going to be covered because it's the arts, not going to be covered. This entire entertainment section, nope. Shoppers will pay more, nope. Um, the funnies, nope. Horoscopes, big nope, definitely nope. Um, there's no weather picture like this, although I think they do cover weather in the regular newspaper. And uh, sports section is a big fat nope. Absolutely nothing from the sports section, including the numbers, standings, never covered, absolutely not. So in summary, the Hasidic newspaper does a lot of natural disasters and accidents political people, I mean, in, in governmental politics and conflict, some high profile trials, 
a lot of Jewish news and funny little stories, uplifting stories. A beer is going into a, a house and uh, destroying a computer, that kind of story. People eat up, love it, absolutely love it. And then in the mainstream daily, it's a lot of personal tragedies, personal person focused stories instead of generalizations a lot of natural disasters and accidents, but again, from the perspective of focusing on the individuals affected by it, um, major, and, and again, this of course has a humanization element that the Hasidic news doesn't have. Uh, major personalities in all aspects of life are looked at with the microscope. Uh, scandals are grist for, for the media, of course. Holidays, you turn out a lot of stories around that. Movies, funny sports, horoscopes, etc., are, um, filling the newspaper. And that's, of course, the print newspaper. Um, the, the online newspapers are, I think, now the most important part of mainstream news. Lastly, I wanna wrap up by saying one last thing, that while these newspapers are made in the community and made for the community, there are outsiders buying ad space all the time, especially the government that advertises, for instance, about vaccinations. Here it's about the measles outbreak. This is the New York City government advertising. This is them again advertising about chicken pox. And now there's extensive advertisements on COVID. These newspapers try as best as possible to toe the line to be politically uh, acceptable to the government. They are not entirely... Um, I would say they are not entirely independent in the sense that they try to be acceptable to mainstream secular public. They try not to get themselves into any controversies, be it in the community or outside. And um, they want to be a welcoming place for, for um, ads from the government. Uh, they would not, I would believe, I've never seen an advertisement from something like anti-vaccine. I think that would be too controversial. The, the places the anti-vaccine ads would go up, would be in the streets. This way they, the, the messaging can circumvent the main newspapers, which might, ref, might turn down such advertisements. Again, I can't confirm that. I can't vouch for that. I haven't spoken to those who put up the, the messaging um, questioning vaccines, if they have even tried the newspaper, but I can tell you it's the, the coverage of something like COVID is very square and very in line with, um, largely very in line with mainstream news, especially Dear Ye Daily. Um, and then there's also, you know, this is a very welcoming place for political advertisements. This is Simcha Felder's um, political campaign, or this is Latita Tish James ran for attorney general. The um, political candidates, the banks, um, whoever is serving the community lawyers, uh, will often put in ads thanking or the community for their votes, for their patronage, um, and so on. To essentially, they're um, buying ad space. So this this makes up the Hasidic newspapers here, um, and I think. There's much more to say. I would be interested to leave a comment to tell me what you think, what you find in the newspaper that is different, that is unique, that um, uh, is noteworthy, that you see. I think that it is, um, there, the newspaper has a lot of implications on the culture, on the way people think, on the attention span, on the way people interpret the world. And um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis of the Hasidic Yiddish newspaper. And um, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.